Hello everybody, this is Robert. I am the CEO and co-founder at Cloud Sigma. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly and easily manage all your SSH keys to access your servers securely within the Cloud Sigma cloud. I'm here right now in my Miami account, and I'm gonna to go to the access and security section and go into key management to uh, show you how you can quickly set up SSH keys. So if you are using SSH already to access servers, you most likely have an SSH key that you're using um, or multiple SSH keys for you and other people in your team. What you can do in this case is simply hit the add button and um, give, the, uh, give the key a name. I'm gonna assume this is from key for Dave. And then I would copy uh, the uh, copy paste the public SSH key into the field that you can see selected there. I'm just going to put some dummy information in, and there is some validation, so you can see that it it obviously recognises that as an invalid key. If I pasted a real key in there, you would then be able to, if you want, also add the private key. It's optional, and you don't need to do that. Um, if you do add the key, uh, it allows you to have in-browser SSH access to your servers. If you don't add the private key, which would be the case for most people who want the maximum security, um, you would simply use an SSH client on your device to access your cloud servers. So I'm going to go ahead, instead of that, I'm going to actually generate a new key um, just for the purposes of this video. Now let's call this uh, tutorial. And what that does is we'll generate a key for you, uh, a, pr a public private uh, pairing. And you can see here the public section of that. And up here you can download that public key or you can also download the private key. So again, that's not the uh, maximum security because we've obviously generated the key for you. But for many customers, it's convenient and it's, it's good enough for them in terms of uh, security level. So um, I've added that key now to my account. And actually, just to show you, I can go ahead and add a second key. Um, so let me show you the key first. Here it is. And then I can go and add a second key, um, generate a key, should I say. Um, I'll put yet another key. It'll generate it. Within a few seconds, it'll be available in my account for access. There you go. So you can now see we've got two keys. So this is how you manage your keys. You can obviously add and remove them. Um, you can add multiple keys, generate keys, etc. What I'm going to do now is show you how that uh, interplays with the server management to ensure that you can have um, fully secure access to your servers from first boot up, which is really important. So here we are in the compute section. I don't have any servers created. So I'm going to show you both methods of adding a key to the server. So first I'm going to use the wizard, which is just a really quick way of getting a server up and running. Um, we've got some predefined sizes, and these are also available in other videos to go in more detail. I'm just going to choose Ubuntu. And now you can see you're prompted for the SSH key and potentially a cloud init script. Again, there's a video about uh, how you can use cloud init. And you'll see here my keys are already displayed. So I can choose to attach those keys, and I'm going to attach both in this case. But I could also uh, use these shortcuts if I hadn't gone to the section already and set them up to generate or add a key. So now they're ready, and I can simply create the server. What it's doing now, as well as creating the server, is it's going to inject the public key into that server and disable password access. So this works across all of our Linux distributions and also the BSD uh, distributions that we have. And it means that if you add an SSH key into that field when you first create the server, you will then um, have password access disabled and the public key already there, ready to go. So it means you can simply now SSH in immediately um, uh, in a secure way to your new server. So that's actually ready. You can see the IP address is here, and we can then um, go ahead and um, access the, the server over SSH. So I want to show you the second way of creating a server and how SSH access can be achieved. Um, using that, and that's our create button, which is the custom server creation. And actually, most customers are using this because it gives them the flexibility that they like. So I'm just going to call this custom server. We can give it a size. And again, there's a tutorial video to explain all these different options and wh what you can do. I can go in and say 3.75. Now I'm going to optimize it, let's say for Linux, because we are talking about SSH, which is predominantly what, what SSH is used with. And again, we, you'll see we have a tab called SSH keys. And in much a similar way as we did from the create, we can go in and we can choose to uh, add a key. So I'm going to add uh, just the one key this time, tutorial. And you can see that that's ready. 
And I could go ahead and let's choose a different distribution quickly from the library. I'm going to go for the latest CentOS 7.1. So it's now going to clone that, um, attach it to the server, which is ready, as you can see. And um, the SSH key is ready. I've sized it pretty much there. The basics covered. I can save this and now start that server. So again, what I've done there is create a server with the chosen distribution, add an SSH key, and then we do the rest. And right now I could then go in SSH into that server immediately using that key pair and get secure access. So I hope that was self-explanatory and um, happy computing.